What's something that the K-pop community needs to hear, but no one ever wants to say? Thanks to BTS, you probably don't like your favorite K-pop boy band as much as you think you do. In the years before BTS really blew up in the United States, so like 2013, 2012, and any years of K-pop that came before that, the success of your average K-pop group was centered around how popular their music are. So when you saw a K-pop group everywhere on Korean television winning awards, it was because their music was popular. Now mind you, before BTS blew up in the United States, they were already pretty popular in K-pop fan circles as it was. And while many K-pop groups long before them would upload vlogs and behind the scene videos, BTS was pretty consistent with it with their bangtan bombs. They created an extra niche fan base within the BTS ARMY fandom that liked them for other reasons besides their music. So even when they weren't on tour and weren't making music, you still had a reason to stand BTS. Which is why when BTS went to that very first Billboard Award they were ever invited to, and ARMY came out to support them in mass numbers, all those journalists you saw on the red carpet, the American media was completely out of the loop. They didn't know what to do. And you guys know how the K-pop industry is when it comes to following a trend. So when other K-pop labels saw what was happening with BTS, they tried to follow suit. And so nowadays, the modern K-pop boy group is less focused on getting a hit song and more so on fan service and fan interactions and creating all these moments that generate a buzz. In other words, for the modern day K-pop boy group, the product isn't the music. It's not the album. The product is the idol. I think this researcher said it best when she said, K-pop companies use marketing that is tailored for emotionally deficient girls and women during their most impressionable stages of psychological growth, where they're seeking likability and self-actualization and or tailored for their condition responses to nurture and protect childlike individuals. She also noted K-pop companies utilizing a third marketing strategy where all K-pop fans' sexual desires, preferences and fantasies are validated. This is facilitated by presenting idols as either virginal and bestial, sexually accessible or sexually vulnerable. In most global societies, the sexual and emotional oppression of women, girls, and femininity as a whole is constantly prevalent. The K-pop industry realizes this, as does the Western pop industry, and creates this pseudo-freedom for girls and women to play out those fantasies. Therefore, when it comes to K-pop, it would be wise as a fan to only believe in 90% of the music you hear and 10% of what your idol or their company tells you. Move like the company and financially invest in the music, not the corporate-imposed fantasy. Fantasies. And someone else commented, that's why fans get so scarily protective of their idols. Their attachment is born from their desire to boost their sense of identity by associating it with the idol's sense of identity.